when they have the guy who is the vocal arranger explaining yes. how he put who where for the solos. Christian Alonzo <laughs> talking about Netflix is the greatest night in pop about the legendary recording of the We Are the World charity single. What am I supposed to sing? The clock is ticking and we had so many disasters coming. Man, are you kidding? <laughs> Few things cry out me quite like a documentary of this kind, whether it's the Wham! documentary or the Millie Vanilli documentary. And now we have the We Are the World documentary. Like that is totally my wheelhouse. So I'm very happy this exists. It's on Netflix now. It's been out there for a couple of days. So we knew we had to talk about this. Um, you got to subscribe because we'll always do a fun documentary <laughs> like this. And we get really excited about it. Like not a lot of channels do documentaries, but they're among my favorite things that we talk about. Here. Totally, so, yes. So come join us for that. All right, youngins, gather around. Let me tell you about a night in the 80s, a magical night where all the biggest names in pop music came together to make this record called We Are the World. There had already been Band-Aids, Do They Know It's Christmas, which Bob right. Geldof orchestrated to raise money for famine relief in Africa. And so they got the idea here. Quincy Jones, Lionel Richie were among the architects of this to do one with American stars, but like, when can you get them all in one place, get all their schedules together? They decided to do it the night of the American Music Awards in 1985. And so it's kind of like how the LA film critics used to plan their dinner around the Golden Globes because <laughs> exactly. like everyone's in town. town anyway. <laughs> Where are you going to go? This has a ton of archival footage and then new interviews with a lot of the people who were part of this recording. This is huge, big anthem, which raised many, many millions of dollars for famine relief. And it was an earworm. It's been stuck in my head all week. Um, so you had like the likes of Michael Jackson, Stevie Wonder, Ray Charles, Bob Dylan, Bruce Springsteen, um, name Cindy Lauper, Huey, Huey Lewis, Lewis, Billy Joel, Paul, Paul Simon, Simon Daryl Hall, but not John Oates. No, Al um, Jarreau, James Ingram, yeah. uh, Tina Turner, uh, several Pointer Sisters. Dionne Warwick, Dion you might have Warwick, said already. So anyways, Nelson. Yeah, so it's, it's a great story. Bal Wynn directed this, who also did Be Water, and he also did the Saturday Night Live documentary called Live from New York. Mm -hmm. and this kind of has the same structure in terms of combining archival footage with new interviews and if you're a fan it's just so exciting um Lionel Richie is sort of the our tour guide into this. He's also a producer on the film and uh, talked about wrangling people. So many great stories, so many great anecdotes about how bizarre it was writing this song with Michael Jackson and all the various animals that were around <laughs> during all of that. Um, who said yes? Who said no? Um, how they had a sign at the at the front of the studio that says, you know, check your ego at the door and how... How did that play out? How all these people who were accustomed to being like the superstar in the room felt a little intimidated by just the incredible array of talent. It was like the first day of kindergarten, somebody described it as. <laughs> and, and, and they were all in there without their assistants and without their, you know, like hair people or whatever. They were just like, bam. And, and, and so, yeah, like at one point, Diana Ross asks somebody for an autograph and then everybody starts like asking everybody else for one. Well, Diana Ross <laughs> asked Huey Lewis, I want to say it was. Like, I think you're right. Yeah. Who was one of the people who felt like the least prepared to be there, the least worthy of being being there when you look at people who've been around for decades prior yeah. to him. I mean, Huey Lewis in the news was really big in 1985, but like compared to like Stevie Wonder or yeah, Ray, Charles Ray Charles or whatever. <laughs> um, so a lot of great anecdotes, some really eye-opening stuff. Um, the stuff with how Huey Lewis ended up being there and getting the solo that he got is interesting. I felt kind of bad for Sheila E. when she told her portion of the story. The Sheila E. stuff is fascinating because you look, you get a documentary like this, and we talk about this all the time, where like documentaries that are about specific artists that, that you can tell that the, the filmmaker has made a deal where like, I get access to all this music and all of this footage and you get to say what is in or out. And so you get a lot of these documentaries that are, that are almost feel like infomercials mm -hmm. for the performer. And so I thought, okay, well, this is going to be about, Oh, wasn't USA for Africa. Great. And we raised all this money and blah, blah, blah. And Sheila E is like, yeah, they were using me to get prints in there. And when I realized that I left, I was like, Oh yeah. no, I was not 
that was something I did not expect to hear in, in this documentary or anywhere. And so little moments like that, like like talking about the, how Al Jarreau was apparently real drunk the whole time, mm-hmm. like just little little nuggets like that I didn't expect. The thing that I learned from this that I didn't know that I had give, have all the more respect for Lionel Richie now is I knew the, the part of the ledge of this was always the night of the American Music Awards. I didn't realize that Lionel Richie hosted the American Music Awards. So he'd been up since like dawn getting ready to do mm-hmm. this huge live TV show. And then he had to schlep over to A&M and like heard all these cats for this song <laughs> that he had co-written with Michael Jackson. It was like, oh man, I, the, I can't imagine how the collapse at the end of that day. Right. Not only did he host the American Music Awards, he performed twice and then he <laughs> won six times. Yeah. But I guess what people were saying was that backstage between commercials, he was talking about We Are the World. Like, his mind was totally elsewhere. So I don't know how he stayed up all night and did that. But you know what's helpful when you are a superstar and you need to stay up all night being creative is coffee with our friends from Coffee Brothers. We have a fantastic deal with them. Take 15% off of your order with our code BREAKFAST15 when you order at least $50 worth of coffee. It is free shipping for you. So jump on that. We have enjoyed so many different flavors. It's a wide variety of of if you want something nutty, you want something sweet, rich, dark. A lot of folks I've seen have, have ordered from us the espresso roast. So you Ooh. guys like your dark, heavy coffee, it looks like. so. And they just got a couple of really great new Colombian coffees in. They are brothers in New York who do like small, single source coffees. So check them Good out. Stuff. Link below. You've enjoyed all the stuff you have had so far, I know. Um, but yeah, they were drinking in the studio. They were, they were, <laughs> they were empty bottles of wine on, on the floor of the studio at A&M Records or the- these are, are night the people, world. Christy. You know, they, they, they just, the, the day gets rolling at about midnight, you know. Lionel Richie, he is running with the night, playing in the <laughs> shadows. This made me go down a whole Lionel All Richie rabbit hole. Totally. <laughs> like, I forgot every song on Can't Slow Down is good. Like, Hello, <laughs> Penny Lover. Like, every song is good. <laughs> It was a definite peak moment for him. Like a lot of the people, you know, and I mean, like Cindy Lauper was just coming off of She's So Unusual. Huey Lewis was coming off of Sports, which yeah. like that album was gigantic. So it, it's this interesting moment. And um, I, I did, I checked on this because I was, I was, Dave and I were watching and I said, was anybody on We Are the World and Do They Know no. It's Christmas? No, that what? Well, Bob Geldof oh. is in the chorus. Oh, is he? Okay, he yeah. You can get a solo line, but he's in the chorus. So he technically straddled both of those singles. That's true. Yeah, Bob Geldof came and he gave a, a pep talk beforehand to sort of focus them on what's really important here. And, and yeah. that was helpful. I also forgot that Dan Aykroyd is in We Are the World. Yes, like, I what know. What the hell is he doing? Dan Aykroyd <laughs> and Bette Midler, like this, the, the most random additions. Um, I, the, there's a whole part uh, involving Stevie Wonder trying to introduce a Swahili element that's bizarre are and goes into some interesting directions um but that's why yeah, i love the story about how stevie wonder got bob dylan to focus because bob dylan felt very <laughs> awkward and vulnerable yes and how he that that's a great story of how he made that work absolutely i the one the one thing i would have liked to maybe a little more about is i have always heard over the years that despite the best efforts of everyone involved that the band-aid and usa for africa stuff didn't really get to a lot of the intended recipients because of the political turmoil that was happening at the oh. time. That a lot of it got sort of waylaid by warlords or something. I don't know this. Yeah. And I, I would have liked the movie to address it. The movie just kind of puts a like, yeah, it was great. And we took it all to Africa and look at these kids. And, you know, and so and maybe that's just, and if it didn't happen, then, then I guess it doesn't need to be there. But that's just a thing that I've heard over the years multiple times about these relief efforts. And so I would have liked to have known just like some more, you know, hard, hard numbers about how all that played out for the yeah. people that was supposed to help. Yeah. A couple things, a couple last thoughts is um, I don't think this could get done today because there's both a maximalism and an mm. earnestness about this that seems sure. very particular to the 80s. And yeah. I just can't imagine a world in which like Beyonce and Taylor Swift and like Dua Lipa and whoever else <laughs> get in a room to do this. It just seems it seems so 80s in it's like the gigantic array of superstars. Also, and no one's being auto-tuned. Right. That's the thing. They all have to actually sing. Um, oh, that's one of the things I loved about it. The, when they have the guy who is the vocal arranger explaining yes. how he put who where for the solos like yeah, all that, that was fascinating. Like process i love process so you yeah. will enjoy all that kind of stuff like they interviewed the guy who was the engineer on the board that night just great stories yes. um if you've never seen kevin meany the departed <laughs> 
comedian Kevin Meany does this great bit, or he did this great bit, where he would lip sync to We Are the World and do every single person's part. And he's yes. like switching out sunglasses depending <laughs> on whether he's Stevie Wonder or Ray Charles or Michael Jackson. It's yes. funny as hell. And it's so well-timed. Um, look for Kevin Meany doing We Are the World. What is your number? Uh, I'll say like a 7.8. I think it's it's, it's really fascinating. And, and like you said, I, I do love a thing where you take this this thing that we all, that, well, people our age know very well, but but take you into places about it that you didn't know before. And so I found that really interesting. Yeah, I'll say nine. I found this endlessly entertaining and so informative, and I really enjoyed it. So The Greatest Night in Pop is on Netflix now. Go check it out.